Man, did you put some pants on before you hang out in the kitchen? Jesus. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, this is Jason's Disturbing Experiences, Episode 3, and this is the Good Samaritan Experience, is the title of this episode. In this episode, um, for Episode 3, I was living out west at the time, so I think it was like uh, November or December of 1997, so back then... I drove a pretty cool, I like the car, still to today's standards, a uh, Nissan 200SX. Excuse me. The Nissan <coughs> 200SX was the car I had back then. Excuse me. Sorry for the congestion. The uh, car I had back then had the flip-up lights, electric windows, electric sunroof. Cool car, and it was fast, too. And I really liked that car. I had it for a bunch of years until I had an accident with it, unfortunately. <sighs> Excuse me. But, um, long story short, this has nothing to do with an accident. It has to do with an accident and judgment. So, back then, uh, when you're younger, I mean, at least for me, I was younger. I was, um, uh, things, stupid things that you do. I'm driving down the highway in the winter because, you know, somebody called me and said, Hey, do you want to come over? And I said, sure. So, you know, you kind of drop everything that you're doing. You know, I didn't have any real responsibilities whatsoever back then. So, you know, get on the highway, freezing cold outside, no coat, no gloves, nothing in the trunk. No, you know, you didn't learn anything from anywhere. You got no backup stuff, no scarf, nothing in case you get broken down. So I got on a t-shirt, got my hair all scooped up in the front, you know, wearing my pants still in 1997, like one of my favorite actors, Jean-Claude Van Damme, kind of tight and high. You know what I mean? Heading to my destination. So I'm driving down the highway and I see a guy broken down on the side and I was in a good mood. So, you know, not thinking, I have no coat, no gloves, no nothing, it's freezing outside. I pull over to help him. Guy gets out of his car and I'm like, hey man, uh, what's wrong? He goes, I think it's either my battery or my alternator. <clears throat> and I'm, you know, I need a jump start, you know, maybe. I said, cool. So as busy as the highway is, I think it was highway 465 or Highway 65 or 70, one of those Indiana highways. Um, here's the thing, grassy next to his car. So I drove with my car next to his car, you know, edged as much as I could to not cross over into the, you know, busy traffic. So the car's a nose to nose. I pop the hood, hook up the cables, jump start the guy. He's ready to go. And I'm freezing out there. I'm like, yeah. So, uh, you know, good luck with everything. And I'm unclipping him. I said, you know, just back up and you know, pull out and you're good to go. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. He says, I go back to open up my car door because I had shut it and it didn't shut all the way. So, I don't know if anyone's ever ran into that before where either the door is shut all the way and I had an alarm that used to be on there and the alarm burned out. So, occasionally, I think the doors would lock on their own or whatever, but the door wasn't shut all the way, but it was still shut. So, if you pulled on the handle, it would go clink, 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 and you couldn't open the door. So here it is, freezing outside. You know, I did this good Samaritan thing. It's like 20, 25 degrees. I weigh all of, you know, 160 pounds back then. And I'm trying to open the door. And this guy, you know, I had already unhooked his cables and stuff. I can't get back in my car. So I got my engine running. I got my door half open. I got no cell phone back then in 1997. Um, and this guy's back in his car up. He's unhooked and charged and ready to go. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, hey, man. I said, can you stay? I said, I can't get in my car. I said, do you have a cell phone or do you have anything? And he goes, I gotta go. I'm sorry, I have to go. I'm already late to be somewhere. And I'm like, I pulled over to help you. I'm stuck, I'm freezing out here. So the guy drove off. I said some choice words to him, yelled at his car while he you know, pulled out and left me there. So here I am now facing traffic in the breakdown lane, um, hood up, or at least, you know, or breakdown or whatever off to the side of the road, hood up. Uh, battery cables in my hand, <clears throat> my door only goes ka-clunk, ka-clunk, I can't open it, and I have a t-shirt on. So, I said, what can I do? I'm going to stand here and die. Nobody's going to stop and help you. I didn't have anything on me. I start jogging. You know, I was in pretty good shape back then. I could run not great, but pretty well. So I ran and ran and ran to the nearest exit, which it felt like a mile or two. I don't know how far it was, but I got off the exit. You know, people going off the exit, beep, beep, like, what the hell are you doing on the exit? So I had to run 
like over the side of not the bat jersey, but it wasn't a jersey barrier, but you know, the metal barrier, whatever. Went over that, and there's a gas station in the distance. Went to the gas station, freezing cold in there, telling my story. Somebody in there helped me, which was pretty cool. Drove me back to the spot. I had AAA, called AAA. AAA came out, pop pop, Slim Jim in the door, and they got me in the car. So I was late to getting to where I was planning on going, and the person I was meeting was already gone and didn't want to talk to me much after that. I blew, blew her off, which I didn't. So when I saw her in school, I explained things and this and that because you figure the time frame from being stuck to getting help with the jogging and all that, man, that had to be, I don't know, hour and a half by the time I got back to the car. You know what I mean? The car engine's running. Uh, I had dropped the hood and just took the cables and hit them under the tire. I'm not going to run down the highway with jumper cables. So, you know, that was my good Samaritan story. And it is an odd story because normally you stop and you get a big thanks and people are extremely helpful. But um, I'm not telling you <clears throat> not to do things for people, but just prepare yourself. If you're in the winter months, put stuff in your car. Put an extra sweatshirt, some gloves, even long johns, a blanket, because you don't know who you might help, or if you need the help, your stuff's always there. Just put it in like a plastic tub or something small you can fit in your car or whatever. At least it's there. <clears throat> and, you know, think of yourself, too. I mean, you know, you're, you're going out there. I mean, I didn't know this guy would react like that. But at the same time, you know, I was so young and gung-ho to help somebody. Somebody could have been laying on the side of the car and did something to you. Whatever. I mean, there's a hypothetical just things. But, man, I was so mad. I said, dude, I stopped to help this guy, and he did this. I cannot believe it. He drove all, he even waved. Kind of like, you know, the heck with you. If I had just kept going, I would have had a great day. But I stopped, and I felt inside of me that I did the right thing. And I think that's, you know, maybe is all that matters. Who knows? Big spectrum of things. But uh, that's, you know, the story for today. It's fairly short. It was episode 1.3, the Good Samaritan episode on Jason's disturbing experiences. Um... Very tired today, a little bit congested, so I hope you guys have a nice week, and I'll have more stories coming soon. Take care.